Miffy was looking out of her window on a stormy day. The wind was blowing, leaves were flying through the air and falling on the ground. But soon the sun came out and the wind stopped. Once again, it was a fine, bright day. Miffy took a ball and went out to play. Miffy threw the ball high in the air. It fell to the ground and rolled next to a tree. Miffy ran to pick it up. And what do you think she saw? It was a baby bird. The storm had blown it out of its nest and it was too young to fly. Oh dear, said Miffy. This poor little baby bird needs help, but what should I do? Miffy took the bird into her house and showed it to her mother. How can I help this poor baby bird? I think the storm blew it out of its nest. It must be hurt. Mother Bunny looked at the baby bird. I think the bird is okay, Miffy. Oh, that's wonderful, Mother. Can I keep it? I will wash it and feed it and make a nice little bed for it. But Miffy's mother said, I don't think a house is the right place for this little bird. It needs its own mother. She must be looking for her baby. They looked outside and saw the mother bird flying all round the tree, looking for the baby bird. We must put the little bird back into its nest in the tree. It's too small to fly up there all by itself. So they put the bird out onto the grass and went to get a ladder. The little bird went and made a little hop. Then it went and made two hops. It opened its little wings and tried to flap them. Then it went and flapped its little wings again. Miffy and her mother came back with the ladder and set it up against the tree. And just then, the little bird went. It flapped its little wings faster and faster and started to fly. It flew round and round, up and up, and right into its nest, all by itself. The little bird is back in its nest, said Miffy. Look! Its mother is flying home, and her baby is safe and sound. Miffy and her mother carried the ladder back inside. And Mother Bird was happy to have her baby home again. Miffy was playing in the garden with her ball when Poppy Pig's niece Grunty came running over to Miffy's house. Miffy! Miffy! shouted Grunty. Let's play hide and seek. That's a great game, Grunty, said Miffy. But there are only two of us. We need more than two people to play hide and seek. Look, Miffy, here is Snuffy. Let's go and get Boris and Barbara Bear. Then there will be four of us. And Snuffy will be able to watch us play hide and seek they all went off to the forest. Soon they arrived at Boris and Barbara Bear's beautiful wooden house. Hello, Boris. 
Hello, Barbara. After you finish your work, would you like to play hide-and-seek with us? Yes, said Boris. We would love to play hide-and-seek with you. We have finished cutting the logs now, so we can play. Let's start. Who will be the seeker? No, Snuffy, said Miffy. That wouldn't be fair. You could sniff around and find us too easily. You can have fun just watching us play. I'll be the first seeker and everyone else can hide. Miffy turned her back and slowly began counting to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Miffy opened her eyes and shouted, Here I come! Ready or not? Miffy began to search the forest. Meanwhile, Snuffy ran up to a tree and began to bark. Boris came out from behind the tree. That's not fair, Snuffy. Miffy is supposed to find us. Then Barbara and Grunty came out from behind the trees where they were hiding. Now we have to start all over again, they said. Yes, said Miffy. You're not supposed to be the seeker, Snuffy. You're not supposed to bark. You must stay quiet and let me look for everyone who is hiding. Once more, Miffy turned her back and closed her eyes while Boris, Barbara and Grunty all ran off to hide. This time, Snuffy was very quiet. Here I come, ready or not, shouted Miffy. She began to look behind every tree. I see you, Boris. I see you, Grunty. Wherever she looked, Miffy could not find Barbara. Where was she? I'm worried that Barbara may be lost, said Miffy. I've looked behind every tree. Now you can bark, Snuffy. Help us find Barbara. Snuffy ran straight to one tree and began to bark loudly. But Barbara wasn't there. Snuffy carried on barking. They all looked up. Sure enough, there was Barbara on a branch way up in the tree. What a great place to hide, said Miffy. Without Snuffy, I would never have found you. In Miffy's schoolroom, there was a plain white wall. Miffy raised her hand and asked her teacher, Wouldn't it be nice if we could decorate the wall with some pretty paintings? We can make some pictures and put them up on the white wall. That's a great idea, Miffy, said her teacher. The teacher handed out paper, pencils and paints. Soon everybody was busy drawing. Miffy drew a lovely flower. Melanie made some drawings of seashells. Aggie drew a fish. Winnie drew a boat with flags on it. Miffy used yellow paint for her flower and green paint for the stem and leaves. Aggie painted her fish with blue and yellow stripes. Winnie coloured her boat blue. She painted the flags red, yellow and blue. I don't know what to draw next, said Melanie when her picture was finished. Neither do I, said Winnie. But we need lots more pictures to cover the wall, said Miffy. 
Come on, children, said their teacher. It's a lovely day outside. Bring your drawing things and let's go outdoors. You will find many things to draw if you look around. Soon the children were looking all over the playground. Miffy found some more colourful flowers to draw. Melanie drew a picture of a tiny red butterfly. And Winnie made a drawing of a very large tree. There were many different things to draw outside. At the end of the afternoon, the children had made lots of different drawings. The teacher was very happy with all the new pictures for the wall. But would they all fit? We must be careful to put all of the paintings close together so that there will be enough room for all of them, she said. But there was not enough room and some of the children were disappointed that their paintings were not on the wall. Melanie raised her hand. I have an idea, she said. Why don't we change the paintings every day so that everyone can have a chance to put their painting on the wall? What a good idea, Melanie, said the teacher. That's just what we shall do. And that way we can make even more drawings. All the children cheered. Miffy said, now it will be more fun than ever to study here. And this was true. Every day, the classroom wall was decorated with different beautiful paintings. Miffy and Melanie were playing together in Miffy's garden, throwing a colourful ball back and forth. Melanie threw the ball high into the air and Miffy couldn't see where the ball landed. As she looked for the ball behind a tree, she discovered something else. It was an egg, a blue egg. How lovely, said Miffy. She forgot all about her lost ball and looked with wonder at the little blue egg. What do you think is inside it, Melanie? She said. Just then Poppy Pig came by. I see you have a blue egg, said Poppy. Do you think you get blue carrots from blue eggs? I don't think so. Carrots don't come from eggs. Melanie said, my granny says that blue eggs have blue socks inside of them. I don't think so. You buy socks in a shop. Eggs come from birds. There must be a bird's nest in one of these trees. Melanie looked up and saw a bird's nest with a big red bird sitting in it. Miffy wondered. Can a blue egg come from a red bird? Poppy said, I'm pink and my mother and father are also pink. Melanie said, I'm brown and my mother and father are brown too. Miffy said, maybe with eggs it's different. We know that yellow chicks come out of white or brown eggs. Poppy Pig lifted Miffy high enough so that she could put the blue egg back in the nest and under the red bird. The mother bird nestled over the blue egg and sang a happy song. 
Poppy found the lost ball. They all had great fun playing with the ball together. They laughed a lot. Suddenly, their laughter was joined by another sound. It was the cheeping of a baby bird. There it was, a tiny red bird in the nest. Miffy realised that a colour on the outside doesn't tell you what's inside. I knew all the time that carrots don't come from eggs, Miffy, said Poppy Pig. I was just making a joke about the blue carrots. Me too, said Melanie. Of course I know that socks don't come from eggs. Now we know that red birds can come from blue eggs, said Miffy. How wonderful! Miffy loved to play in the snow. She loved to ride her sledge down the snowy hills. She loved to slide over the snow on her skis. She loved to lie in the snow and move her arms to make snow angels. What she liked best of all was to make big snow bunnies. It was a hard job and she needed help to make them. Who do you think came along to help her? It was Snuffy the dog. Snuffy loved to run and jump in the snow and when she saw Miffy trying so hard to push and roll a big snowball, she ran up and helped her. They pushed and pushed together. As the snowball rolled along, it picked up more and more snow. It got bigger and bigger. That's big enough for the snow bunny's body, said Miffy. Now we can roll a smaller snowball for the snow bunny's head. Miffy made a little snowball with her hands. Snuffy was able to push it along with her nose. But when it got bigger, Miffy joined in the pushing until it was big enough to be the snow bunny's head. Now we must put it on top of the big snowball, said Miffy. No matter how they tried, they could not lift the heavy snowball. Just then, Miffy's friend Boris Bear arrived. Hello, Miffy, said Boris. What are you doing? We're trying to make a giant snow bunny, said Miffy. But its head is too heavy and we can't lift it. I have an idea, Miffy, said Boris. I was taking these planks to my workshop, but we can use them to make a ramp to the top of the big snowball. Boris placed the planks against the snow bunny's body. The planks made a perfect ramp right to the top of it. Now they could roll the smaller snowball up the ramp. It was still hard work, but it was not so hard as lifting it would be. There it was! At last! The snow bunny's head was resting right on top of its body. Then Miffy went to find two sticks to make the ears. She stuck the two sticks into the top of the head. They don't look like Bunny's ears, said Miffy. She had an idea. She packed snow firmly around one stick. She packed more snow around the other stick. 
perfect bunny ears. Snuffy ran off over the snow and returned with two rubber balls she often played with. Miffy laughed. She pushed the balls into the snow bunny's head. Now he has eyes, said Miffy. He can see what a wonderful job we did. It was all with your help, Snuffy and Boris. You're such clever friends. Finally, Miffy added a carrot to make the snow bunny's nose. Now the snow bunny was complete. Fun, Snuffy, Grunty, Boris, Bear, Puff.